I'm back. Well, where have I been? Well, I had this date with Irma, and uh, when I heard about her reputation, I left. <laughs> well, man, we've got a few things coming up. Uh, let me cover a few of them, and then we'll get on to the nitty-gritty of this review. Uh, it's all good stuff. I've got one of these things coming up. It's a Boss MS3. Finally arrived after four months. That's coming up. Bit heavy that one. I've got this one coming up, which uh, I also waited months for. This one's called a uh, Digitech Freakout. It's one of those pedals that you never really sort of find. It's uh, yeah, very interesting. We'll come back to that one too. And I've got this. Uh, this one's been around a while, but I thought I'd buy one anyway because I'm into this sort of thing. Uh, I had a pedal called the Freak which uh, purportedly set the uh, tone of your guitar to a particular frequency that a wah-wah might be set up. Well, you could use the wah, of course. But anyway, these guys, Full Tone, made a pedal that... Uh, get at it. That actually does it for real life, and there's your, there's your wah at the bottom. That should be an interesting little uh, exercise, uh, developed by Robin Trower, indeed. It's not a newish pedal, but uh, definitely one worth looking at. Well, what else have we got? Well, to be honest, I don't want to tell you about everything. I've got some amazing stuff down there, but I will let you have a look at one little thing before we uh, get on to this review. And there it is. A Strat body. Uh, this is coming up soon with uh, uh, a build of a, a guitar that incorporates thousands of different little reviews within it. Uh, so this one should be very interesting. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. I'll let you have a little glimpse at it. Oh, shut up. Yeah, I suppose so. You're going to want to come back and watch this one. Yeah. You're definitely going to want to come back and watch this one. That's just awesome. Anyway. You know for that. Let's get down to this review. Oh, you're back. Oh, you bought me the freak out, right. How's it doing? So you got your legs crossed under there. Well, that could be painful. Well, you're going to give it to me or not? No. I'll take steps to sort you out. Well, that's him done with. He's gone belly up. So we'll cart him off again. Have you picked anybody up by the big toe? Oh. <laughs> well, here I am back again. That's got rid of him. And... We're going to take a look at the, uh, the Digitech Freakout. Now, if you're as old as me, <laughs> or maybe not, and you listen to Jimi Hendrix, uh, you'll remember going to listen to that album uh, that made at the Isle of Wight, uh, Hendrix Live at the Isle of Wight, 1970. Long time ago, but that record, uh, yeah, it had a bit of feedback on it that uh, was particularly awesome. You go to the start of Foxy Lady, you hear this little note in the background of ee, in the really low. And he's just talking and you hear the people around and all the rest. And that note gradually increases. Well, it would do. It's got four Marshall 100 watts behind him. But it gradually increases until he has to scream over it. And then off he goes into, uh, into the track. And... Uh, I always wondered, at, you know, what it would be like to be able to do that. And uh, certainly today you can't. Uh, because you have all the do-gooders that stop you, you know, with those noise meters and all that rubbish that goes on. I mean, tell me I'm nuts. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> anyway, the fact is, whether we've got a studio, whether we're playing live, whatever it is, you, you can get those sounds and you can get that sustain. Go and ask, well, you can't ask Gary now, but Gary Moore used to be a past master at it and they are track. <laughs> but it's very difficult to do. So Mr. Ordinary, like me and you, yeah, we are ordinary. Well, we need something to help us. And Digitech's idea was a stamp panel. I think it's uh, very clever. What we've got on the front of here, well, I won't cover that for now. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll flip it apart and take a look inside, just to make sure that the quality's really where it should be. What's this thing made, by the way? 
uh, oh, it's made in China, so we really do want to look inside. And uh, let's go from there. So I'll whip the top off now. We'll get this close up and uh, see where we go. Hold on. Well, here's the inside. Well, this board, like a lot of these boards uh, that you see these days, uh, it's getting more and more technical and better and better and better. Remember, this is made in China. And uh, it seems to me that Digitech or Harman, call them what you will, will be managing the uh, manufacturing of this product because this is not like one of your cheap Chinese products. This is a bit different. In fact, this reminds me a lot of uh, the sort of Roland stuff that's sort of made in Taiwan. But this one is in China. You can see it's all surface mounted. Uh, you've got the main processing unit down here, probably memory related there. And basically a BIOS that's been flashed with what it says here, a freak out. <laughs> The rest of it's ancillary I.O. chips, bit for the power, bit of this, bit of that, and not much else really. But if you look at the quality of the board, the quality is really 100%. No modifications, no fixes, no bodges, nothing. It actually is, uh, well, a really good internally made board. And that's what we're looking for when we do these quick looks uh, as we do. Uh, the quality overall. What I don't want to see is what I saw in maybe... Inside an orange gym root, which uh, you could tell the manufacturing quality of that was lo far lower quality than anything you'd see in, in the likes of this. And uh, I didn't relate to that too well on an app that cost, well in England at the time, about four or five hundred pounds. Uh, this is a different story altogether. This is up there with the Rowan quality and Rowan always seems to be pretty good. Let's go and have a look at the uh, the other part of this. Actually, before we leave this, if you can see that connector, that's a connector down there with lots and lots of pins. Those pins are actually fastened to the top part of the lid, if you get me, the one with all the leads on. So if you pull this apart, just remember when you're putting it back, you're going to have a bit of a job if you're not really careful what you do. If you bend these pins putting it back, well, the ones on the other bit are, I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, you can have major problems, so just be aware of that. Uh, but it's definitely worth having a look inside. Let's move on. Here's just a very, very quick look at something that I noticed. If you look at the black wall across here, it's pretty much level on the video. You can see that this one's been fitted at an angle like so. See that? Makes it so much harder to put back together. Uh, so just be aware of that. Well, this is what else we've got on the back of the pedal. Uh, Basically the switches and the uh, the LEDs for the uh, the amount of uh, sustain. We've got a funny little switch that goes on to the PCB and presses a PCB mount. So you're not changing that anytime soon. Anyway, that's enough for underneath. Let me uh, assemble the pedal and we'll take a look what we've got by way of control. This was just a, a quick shot of the board underneath once I'd assembled everything back but without fitting this cover. You have to sort of take the bottom plate off, fit it to the top plate and then fit the bottom cover. Well, here we are around the front. As you can see, uh, it's got some LEDs down here. One or two controls. This one's a multi-control. A couple of switches and uh, sort of on and off or sort of half on and half off, if you know, if you get what I mean. It, it, rather than a switch, it's a on for now or off for now, if you hold it down. It's also true bypass for the guys that like that sort of thing. Let's have a look at what we've got anyway around it. Uh, on this left hand side here, this LED uh, section, this indicates the effect whether it's on or off. Uh, and it, it sort of shows when the, the onset of feedback's coming in as well, which are uh, pretty useful. You've got mains only, by the way, connects up at the top here, if you can see where I'm going on the top. Uh, which for some guys that like uh, batteries, that's a bit of a pain in the neck. They say recommended harm and power supply. We say, well, any that works. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you look at this, this momentary bit. This is what I was talking about with the, the switch. You can have it either, so it's momentary, well, it works while you press the switch. Or it's on or off, if you get what I mean, uh, by pressing that switch. So that's that control, very simple. 
You've got another one here to whether the effect's dry or whether it's mixed in with the, uh, the feedback. Now the thing is, if you get rid of the dry, uh, what you can end up with is like a sort of violin sort of tone. You know how you, you take your volume uh, knob and move it up and down to get that sort of violining from, quote, the old days? <laughs> well, you can do that with this, and uh, that's partly what this thing's used for here. So, all very, uh, very clever, really. Uh, yeah, very useful. But if you want the uh, dry signal on, well, you can have that on as well. Why not? It's all relative. Moving across to this one here, uh, where it says type. What we've got with that is, if you look around the edges, you've got third, second, first, sub, natural high, I can't read the others, uh, fifth, and so on. These are the actual harmonics that the pedal will generate when you're, when you're using it. So you set that to which one you like, really, <laughs> more than anything, or what you're wanting to play, I guess, uh, and away it will go on that harmonic. Pretty good. Lastly, we've got this top one that talks about range, and the inside bit uh, of that is the gain. Uh, and the outside bit is actually the onset of feedback, uh, if you get me, where it starts to come in. So you've got a lot of control uh, of where this effect's going to be. And, and, you know, careful setup here can give you really, really good results. Uh, it's not really much you can say about it other than that, except the usual place for in is this side. And the usual place for out is that side. How boring is that? Uh, I guess we'll take a look at the uh, back. Hold on. Well, here we are around the back, and what you'd expect to see is all here. You've got the CE approvals, the rush compliances, the uh, some European thing. I don't even know <laughs> what that means. Who cares? Don't worry. It's all on here. So, and it's made in China. You see that? So when people knock uh, Chinese product, well... The product they're really knocking is the cheap and nasty stuff like you see on a lot of the uh, West Paul copies and stuff like that. What they're not really knocking is something that's made to this standard. Although that has its own problems, doesn't it? Uh, by way of act actually taking away business from you know, your own country and uh, moving it to China. Brings up the Chinese economy really nicely and takes yours down really nicely. <laughs> I guess if you're Chinese, that's a good thing. Or if you're maybe American or English or... Well, I won't worry about the rest. Uh, then you might have a bit of a problem with that. Some people do, some people don't. Interesting to note that the... Uh, I like this bit as well. Freak out version naught. <laughs> well, I do know that to get this pedal, I, I spent months trying to get it from one company and they tried really hard. But the distributors faffed around, messed them around, and uh, ultimately I did get this particular pedal uh, about two weeks before it actually arrived in the other place. Uh, so if you want to know where that other place is, so you can get one, just give me a give me a give me a little note on the uh, YouTube, and I'll uh, get you up to speed. I know they had it in last time I spoke. Definitely worth the effort. So. There it is, FCC approved, all the, all the, everything that you want on it. Uh, what more can I say? Let's have a quick look at the power. Sometimes I miss things off like this, but some people want to know what power supply it is. And now you can see that it's uh, negative center, positive outer, and it's nine volts DC, 300 milliamps, which isn't particularly the higher draw. There's a lot of bits inside this. Anyway, there it is. You get a good idea of that uh, finish as well, don't you, when you see it from like this. Okay, what else do you get in the box? Well, you get these two pieces of paper. Uh, this one's pretty... Uh, well, it's got a picture on it and uh, a couple of little words, but uh, neither use nor ornament. <laughs> so don't waste your time with that. Plug her in. And you've got this one here, the Digitech uh, by Harman. Register online at www.digitech to get the most out of your new gear, including factory warranty confirmation. Well, let me not throw you. You've got a factory warranty confirmation, whether you fill that thing out or not. All these guys really want is your details. They want your data. So you really want to give them all your data and then you're going to be hounded for the rest of your life. 
<laughs> They're not alone, by the way. Everybody else does the same thing. So uh, regarding data and the internet, uh, yeah, don't go there. Just keep it to yourself. They won't do you any favours. You've got a warranty. Take it back where you bought it. Now, there's a load of things about this pedal that I really like. Uh, when you get to hear it a bit later, out there, I don't like it doing that, <laughs> out there, uh, you'll realise uh, well, really how good it is. Uh, it's a pretty unique pedal that I haven't found uh, one similar to this uh, really anywhere, uh, no matter what they say. So I can see there's been a lot of work inside there to, uh, to make this pedal work, yeah. Well, I did take a quick look uh, on that PC over there behind me. Uh, just at the street sort of, well, the list price is from people like Anderton's. Uh, everything's marked up as list price. 249 quid on their side. And strangely enough, they've got more than 10 in stock, but the local dealer that I wanted to deal with struggled to get one. Now you ask yourself why that is. Uh, I don't like that sort of thing. And those distributors, well, good figure. Fact is, on the streets of, uh, or should I say, yeah, it's probably the streets of Dallas and places like that all across America. It's probably about 175 or 179. So it's not a particularly hyper cheap pedal. I've been looking for second hand ones of guys who give up, but you won't find them yet. Uh, all I can say is it's probably worth the money. Uh, as a rating out of 10, I have tried this one. As a rating out of 10, I'd give this probably a 9. And the reasons for that are, first of all, Built quality is superb. Second of all, it's such a, a unique and uh, rare sort of pedal. Well, uncommon sort of pedal. I wouldn't say it's rare. <laughs> Anderton's got 10. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, so, a uh, high quality pedal. You're paying for it. It's well made. There's a lot inside it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out there and have a listen at uh, what this thing can do. You might be very surprised. You can even take a clean guitar and make it sustain uh, wildly. Uh, quite an incredible pedal. Now, just before I move on to the next thing, don't forget all them reviews that are coming up. The MS3, uh, that, uh, what's it called? I forgot. That wa WA4, yeah. Yeah, that WA4, yeah, I can't even say it, that WA4. I've got an Eventide H9 uh, Max there, which I did review before, but uh, I just wanted another quick look at it to see what's changed really. And if there's anything worthwhile, I'll make a video. There's this pedal and uh, yeah, we've got that guitar coming up and uh, one or two other things actually. Uh, I have a review coming up presently of the uh, Soundcraft uh, UI 24B, which is like a, a rack mounted mixer. I'm not going to go into any great depths about it, but listen, you guitarists, just trust me, you want one. <laughs> you think you don't. You think it's nothing to do with guitar, but I'm telling you now that uh, you can have a whale of a time with it, and you can pick them up at the right price as well if you fish around a bit. So that's something else that's coming. Then we've got that, that guitar that uh, I'm going to make, uh, which has got lots of reviews even within the building of the guitar. So that's another, uh, that's quite a good one. Uh, well, very interesting. Do you notice I'm thin, by the way? I've been on a diet. The gut's gone. Well, the rest of me is just as fat, but the gut's gone. <laughs> anyway, enough for now. Uh, here comes the playing that way. Uh, hope you like it. And uh, it's a great pedal that I'd recommend if you want to do this sort of thing. And if you don't, go and get your 400 watt Marshall amps, crank it up, and you can do a Jimmy. Uh, he did an absolutely incredible job. Oh, one thing. Don't forget to go to www.turningmckenzie.com. No doubt it'll be Christmas by the time I get to that to do some updates and then you won't see many on YouTube. They'll be all on the website. Or you can go to my YouTube channel and uh, watch all these hundreds of videos. I'll probably be up to about 220 in about a month. <laughs> and uh, probably over 20,000 uh, guys that watch or have submitted. So thanks for that, by the way. Uh, it's taken some doing. Till next time, get out of here. <laughs> okay, well, here I am in the studio with the uh, the Digitech Freakout. Let's hope it doesn't freak out. Uh, <laughs> in any case, this is the thing we're gonna we're gonna plug in. We're gonna be plugging into this uh, 
Marshall 2555X in its 50 watt mode and not give it too much drive so that you can get to hear what this does and what it doesn't. I won't be playing any tunes with you, I just want you to get the idea of what this pedal's about. Uh, yeah, I could play tunes, but I don't think I'll today. Not on this video. Watch the others. So I'll do some general settings here and uh, yeah, see what you think. Yeah, it all looks pretty good to me, but that's me, you know. You'll never be a Jimi Hendrix at the Isle of Wight though, remember that. Oh man, he was awesome. Hold on. Okay, so this is the tone with the, uh, the pedal kicked out, or the sustain should I say. <laughs> And if you kick the pedal in, see you nearly get a, a funny thing going on at the end there. But it depends how it's set. Just some more. Well, last time was the uh, second harmonic, and this is the third harmonic. So you get that sharpish cut off. And if you if you adjust it too much, it goes the other way, really, uh, which is a bit weird. say the amp isn't particularly loud so it's not helping the pedal at all to uh, to create any sustain I turn the amp up a little bit I've moved back to the uh, fifth harmonic now and I'm just gonna bring up a bit more of the volume and a bit more sustain so with it out it's still pretty, well, you get a bit of sustain from it, but nothing dynamic. If we kick it in. Remember, it's a choice of the harmonic that uh, changes things. So let's choose another one. This next one's called uh, Natural Low. Oh, it's still turned on, so let's see what we get. Not bad, considering how low the amp is, it's still pretty low. It's on the 50 watt mode at about 25%. So, <laughs> what about up here? That's got a very, very low action on it. I think if you set it slightly higher, it might change things a little. But you can see that you can get into a bit of a tiz was. Lost it, see. sort of funny tone out of it. Having said that, it is a bit weird when you play a chord, you can get a, a chord that will sustain. Okay, well I've got one other weird thing going on with this pedal. <laughs> it is weird. 
Uh, what I've done is turn the actual guitar signal off so you only get the signal from the pedal. A uh, little bit weird to play, but even weirder to listen to, I, I guess. But uh, here you go. somebody could do something with that uh, in the right circumstance of uh, music. Anyway, that's it for the, uh, the Digitech Freakout. Uh, bit of a weird pedal, but you could do a lot with it uh, particularly live. Well, maybe not so much live, because truth is, you can crank your ramp. <laughs> Till next time, get out of here.